There are various pathophysiological mechanisms that lead to diarrhea. Bowel movements that are too frequent and often of loose consistency, watery, frequent stools. Diarrhea due to antidepressant therapy is caused by increased GI gastrointestinal motility. When a person gets diarrhea because of medication, when it's, and specifically antidepressants and psychotropic agents, it is due to increased motility of the gastrointestinal tract. And that's one mechanism, one pathophysiologic mechanism, whereby a person would experience diarrhea. That as food moves through the gastrointestinal tract, and specifically the colon, where most of the water is reabsorbed, the large intestine mostly is reabsorbing water. There's not enough time to absorb enough water, and so you get water in stools, which are also not only loose, but frequent. And the opposite is true in constipation. If GI motility is depressed, if the bowels are not moving enough, and that could be due to, for example, opiates, reduce the contractility of the, of the GI tract and cause constipation. Stimulant also, norepinephrine, you get the opposite effect. Food matter is moving too slowly through the colon, too much water is reabsorbed, and when a person finally does have a bowel movement, the stools are hard and dry and difficult to pass. So there are other mechanisms. There's infectious diarrhea, which is a secretory diarrhea, and so there are other disease states, but in the case of antidepressants and psychotropic medications inducing diarrhea, it's because the serotonin is attaching to receptors in the gut and is promoting movement, too much movement. And so there's not enough time to reabsorb all the water. And the antidote, therefore, would be a medication like loperamide, which is over-the-counter emodium. Emodium is essentially an opiate that doesn't have the central nervous system effects of opiates, so it's not sedating, there's no euphoria, it has no abuse potential, but it binds to opiate receptors in the gut, which inhibits acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter that is essential for gastrointestinal motility. So it's basically the anticholinergic effect that one gets from this medication, similar to medications like Vicodin and Narco, Hypercodone, or Oxycodone, or any of the other opiates. Stimulants cause constipation by a similar mechanism inhibiting the parasympathetic nervous system, which uses acetylcholine as one of its primary neurotransmitters, and instead flooding the system with epinephrine, norepinephrine, which is used by the sympathetic nervous system. So the organism is in fight or flight mode, salivating and digesting, and having bowel movements is really not top priority. <laughs> the blood flows to the skeletal muscles, the heart starts to pump fast, the airways dilate, the pupils dilate, and all of the energy is shunted toward fighting or fleeing. But the parasympathetic nervous system is more concerned with grazing, chewing, swallowing, digesting, and absorbing nutrients and passing waste. So the thing to know about this side effect, however, is that it is mild, it is dose dependent, it's an early side effect, and people develop tolerance very quickly. You downregulate the serotonin receptors in the gut, and over the course of just a few days, GI motility returns to normal and the diarrhea resolves. By attaching to the opiate receptors and inhibiting acetylcholine, we reduce gastric motility in an indirect way so that it's being caused by too much serotonin, but we're fixing it by reducing acetylcholine. And that's very true about 
effects and side effects uh, for medications. It's really more about the balance between neurotransmitter systems than about the absolute level of one or another agent. It is an early side effect, meaning that the longer a person takes the medication, the more immune that person gets to that particular side effect. So that when you later increase the dosage, and sometimes even doubling the dosage, and then later doubling that, it doesn't return. Once you have gotten past the diarrhea, the liability for having diarrhea, just as with headaches and nausea, you're not going to then re-experience the diarrhea or the nausea a month later when you double the dosage. It's an early side effect. It doesn't show up later as we continue to increase the dose, unlike some side effects, which are also dose-dependent, which don't show up until you reach a certain dosage. There's a threshold. So there are early side effects. There are later side effects that are both dose-dependent. The dose dependence explains the side effect. But this side effect can also be mitigated not only by starting with a low dose, but by slowing absorption. And the same is true of nausea and headaches. If we slow down the same number of milligrams by taking it with food, by dividing the dosage, or by using a long-acting preparation, an extended release preparation, then you can mitigate the intensity and in many cases obviate the side effect completely. So that if you take Zoloft, for example, and some agents have a greater propensity than others, even within the same class. So for example, among the SSRIs, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, Zoloft and Luvox by far are the most notorious at causing diarrhea initially. It's mild, but it, it does occur. And you never see it with Paxil, which has significant anticholinergic effects. It actually is the only SSRI with significant anticholinergic effects. So if you take 100 milligrams of Zoloft on an empty stomach and you've never taken it, you're going to get more than diarrhea. You're also going to be very queasy and have a headache, most likely. I would expect greater than 90% of people to react that way. Whereas if we give you 25 milligrams on a full stomach, you're not likely to feel anything or have any kind of GI disturbance. So the standard is 50 milligrams, but here lately I've been starting at 25 for just a few days and then graduating to 50, and I always tell patients to take it with food. Eventually they get to a point where they can take the entire dose on an empty stomach, 200 milligrams, and have no diarrhea, no queasiness. There are other side effects that a lot of people have that are chronic side effects, but diarrhea is not a chronic side effect. You do consider the potential for a problem there, for example, in an individual with irritable bowel syndrome. We do take into consideration comorbid conditions, so I would think twice about using Zoloft or Luvox over, say, for example, Lexapro or Prozac if they already have a history of irritable bowel syndrome or if a person tends to respond to stress with their gut, then I might think twice. But Imodium works very well, and the side effect is very easy to minimize or avoid altogether, and it resolves very quickly. It's never a reason to discontinue an SSRI or any serotonergic antidepressant.